right, so um, I'm going to be going over the bare springboard and how that occurred. have to find my place. So this bear symptom is confirmed on the 15th by a little wider spread. So I think that is right about here. So we'll continue. June 20th. All right. Sometimes it just lose my place. All right, and the volume is the highest thus far over five million shares. So that's on the on the twenty second. And what he's saying about this is that it's a potential um, climax, and um, we begin to become wary of this both side because because what? Because that volume in comparison with the trading of previous week indicates selling by large interests, we move our stops within etc. etc. So what is what is he saying? He's saying it's probably a climax. That volume, that heavy volume, because it just means that oh yeah, it's going up. But is it? What is it? Is it a breakout? Is it absorption? Is it something else? Is it you know shakeout etc. He's saying that this is a buying climax, all right? And you see that it's at a former resistance level as well. So um, the 25 makes a gain, a further gain of two points in the average, then the price slumps about six points. So it's about here, right there. On volume of 4.3, large supply overcoming and excited public demand coming in as usual at the top of a rise. At the top of a rise, you have public demand coming in, creating the climax, and right after the climax, uh, smart money continues to sell. It's sold initially on the rise, and then after the rise on the down bar, which is this bar right here, right there. Uh, this distinctly bearish, we're therefore closing along the blah, 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 blah. And then it keeps on going. The volume has fallen off to about 3.5 million shares and up thrusts are shortening. In the net, <coughs> this is considered bearish. So he's taking a lot of factors here. One, volume tipping off. Two, shortening of the thrust. Three, range. All of those factors, you know, the ranges are getting smaller. The shortening of the thrust from high to high to high to high. The volume tipping off. All of that put together is bearish or distinctly bearish so you see over here where he has a note note the shortening of the upthrust that is the tendency of high points to arch over from 24th to the 27th he's just saying all right you know high to high is shortening so that's what's meant by shortening of the thrust and downside it would be shortening of the thrust but low to low to low so it creates a zone and on the 27th it bulges over a point, narrows its range and closes within a net gain of one and a half on a volume of about 3.8. Uh, this looks like bidding up to a new high. Again, this maneuver right here, we'll talk more about this as I progress to show like a lot of times after a sign of weakness or change of behavior, there's a bid up to a new high. And he does that even, he explains that maneuver exactly that, like a sign of weakness and a bid up in his tape reading course as well. Um, and over here he's just talking about it now. But a lot of times there's the way the way the market turns is there's some initial sign of weakness. After that, uh, prices are bid up. So how that sometimes that sign of weakness comes in the form of a red bar. Other times it's just you know resistance, or you see a lot of clustered closes, or you see a lot of shortening of the thrust, or you see a volume tapering off, and they just bid it up and then break. Because they want to, because they're encountering resistance, so it's called he calls it breaking the stalemate and stuff like that. 
All right, so what is the point catch shorts as well as longs and all of that? So bid up to a new high and sell on the way down. Well, and also, no, really you get the best prices. You bid up, people, people in the market don't realize they're controlled by their emotions. Their emotions force them. They're not thinking. The emotions force them to trade. That's the point. You know, if we literally urge them, push them, propel them, throw them over the edge to trade. All you got to do is just jack up the price enough so people's fear kicks in, specifically fear of missing the move, and that drives their uh, buying behavior. It's not rational. It's not, uh, you know, let me think, is this a good stock and all that ratios and whatever. No, it is purely I am missing out and I have to get in. We've we therefore put out more shorts, protecting our commitments, etc., etc. On the 29th, the opening is lower in price, recedes from 144. Okay, we now observe that the average has spent four days moving sideways, making no further progress after a steep rise and following a 5 million share session on the 24th. Okay, no further progress, shortening of the thrust, lack of progress, okay? and following a 5 million share session on the 24th. So that's your 5 million share session. Now what's happening? So you have spent four days moving sideways, making no further progress. That's the whole point of moving sideways. It means it's not making any progress. That's how, that's what it means, no progress. It means like the close to close to close is within a very small range of barely making any progress and after a steep rise, all right, from whatever, following 5 million, there has been a tendency to decrease in volume. In view of the previous deductions, we interpret this to mean there's a lessening of demand. Bingo. This is a concept, lack of demand or lessening of demand. It doesn't need to come after like uh, weakness or whatever. I can make the point that over here, on this pullback, there's lessening of supply. There is. Why? Because volume is dead. Similarly, I can make a point over here. This is lessening of, of demand. But what are those bearish deductions? You know? We also note further lateral movement or reactions would definitely break the, ups, the, the trend line, which is what he means by the upward stride. It's just a fucking trend line. You draw it, it cracks. Hence, we're ready to sell more stock short if we can get get them off on the bulges. Here's another point. He always tries to look for the bulges. I mean, not always, but he prefers to. Showing exhaustion of buying power. Okay, the market is still in 137. It's in the zone, but now it's definitely dropped out of the sharp. Uh, upward angle. So this is how you want to use a trend line. You have this uh, trend line. It cracks or there's a new trend line with a lower slope. That means the momentum, the, um, the speed or whatever you want to call it, has dropped. Here he's saying that it's showing exhaustion of buying power. Low volume on the two-day dip to the bottom, however, suggests we may anticipate an effort to rally back toward the high. What dip is he talking about? These two days. See, from, from this high up here to one, yeah, two, it's dipping. As it goes down, volume diminishes. So, what is he interpreting this? Suggests we may anticipate an effort to rally back towards the high. The way the market behaves on the expected rally will probably help to confirm or it may contradict. So, you got to check the rally. But he doesn't know. He knows there's a 5 million share day right here. After that, he knows there's also, uh, uh, I think there's also 5 million share day here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe a little bit less. I don't know. 1, 2, 3, 4, around 4 million share. And on the down, meaning red bar, at the resistance area. Then he knows that volume tapers off and it starts the shortening and it's all within a certain range closes aren't making progress and there's some sideways angle and then whatever this thing drops but now you have a pullback and that pullback is on low volume and you know what low volume pullbacks mean they encourage the bulls because low volume pullback mean that price that bears are not strong 
otherwise there would be a higher volume and more price uh, movement all right so low volume on the two-day dip however suggests we may anticipate an effort to rally back up up the high the way the market behaves on the expected rally would probably help to confirm or contradict it all he's saying is check check the rally the next rally that sometimes you just can't fucking figure it out you know like what happens is you have a low volume pullback like over here low volume pullback right and so in your mind it's like oh shit that's bullish you know but you need more evidence because it when when you're in the market and, you, and you're judging the market it's not oh it's bullish oh it's bearish it's both sides have their factors both sides have their factors not just one side that's why people trade them both sides so the ability to judge like okay there are five factors here on bullish and only two factors on the bearish will lean you towards the bullish side that's the way it works it's not one is bullish because of some crossover or whatever here for example it looks very bullish when the dip happens but before that, it looks very bearish because of the climax and the selling right after and the volume tapering off and the shortening of the thrust and at resistance, it's reversing at resistance, unable to hold any breakout, no breakout on heavy volume, just up thrust this line. So all of that together looks very bearish, but on that first pullback, no volume, no selling, no wide range spread. What is that saying? <laughs> bullish. So you see how it went from bearish at a zone or level to bullish on the pullback. So this, so in this situation, you have to rely on something else. One trend, two hold, and see how the levels levels hold. So here. How I suggest we may anticipate an effort to rally back towards 143. The way the market behaves on the expected rally will probably help confirm or contradict our position. So we wait developments. What positions he was looking to go short? All right. July 1st, the yeah, widespread nearly two points higher. Volume shrinks. All right, but volume shrinks. So you have widespread, meaning this bar right here is a green bar guess you know it, it it is two points higher but volume shrinks why is volume shrinking now can you say that's bullish or bearish it's a little bit difficult to say like he's saying oh yeah it's bearish why the volume but a lot of times you you know you the bulls will say but look at its widespread how did it go up so high so from that angle it can be bullish right especially after the fact now what what is what he's looking at is the dip and the reversal and seeing that the volume on the reversal is actually less than the volume on the dip bars so something's not making sense from a price perspective it looks very bullish because look clean breakout just all it does is test this area right here ding ding ready to react price you know um, goes down goes up high and close you know less than a 50 percent pullback it looks bullish from price but in the volume signature will say what where's the juice you know so so on the second the market so basically the concept here is that yeah you have you have all that stuff with all that stuff in the background if you have this rally but the volume is actually shrinking more it's bearish on the second the market narrows to a three point range for the average and the close is a uh, half point lower on reduced volume increased dullness lower close less volume indicate less power in the bullish side now let's take a look at this here what are the factors or what are the whatever uh this is what on the second the market narrows to three point range for the average and the close is half point lower okay so it's a red bar right after a green bar you have a green bar then you have a red bar on reduced volume 
it's still less volume. Now he's saying that that's dullness, that that lower close and less volume indicate less power on the both side. But again, this can be interpreted in multiple ways. Why? Because if it's a red bar and it's less volume, you would say, wait a second, whereas, you know, there's no pressure. Isn't that a good thing? Right? So this is where the subjectivity comes in. You have bulls. For me, I would say that at this point, I'm concerned if, uh, for the bulls because here the volume should have increased. But, I, you know, you'd still be bullish. Right? Here is a problem because there's no follow-through. However, that, that bar doesn't increase in volume, doesn't take out the low. So you, it can just reverse up, but he's immediately saying that it's dullish and this and that. I say less volume on that red bar would actually encourage the bulls to ignite and take out the high. On the third, there's another attempt to rally, and yet yeah, that attempt to rally is what's expected after that lack of pressure. And the average reaches the old 143 supply line. Now here you have that attempt. Ding. Increased volume. Green bar. as a Probably as a result of this low volume bar. But something's not right. So on the third there's another attempt to rally. And the average reaches the old supply line at the upper edge of the trading zone. Closing about three points higher. But volume is not measuring up to the standard standard of previous rally days so all he's doing is comparing the rally days and comparing the um comparing something else just comparing the rally days and saying oh yeah you know it's not it's not a lot it's not break break but it is an increase in volume so here he's measuring against the standard of the previous late rally days so in June late rally days here is the volume here look at all this volume now look at this volume yes it is increasing from the prior day but if you use the this as a base this heavy volume 5 million 4 million this is half that so nothing to be afraid of we sell more which is the bulge we have been looking for, placing stops as before above the danger point. July 6th has whatever, and bang. We, we, we read this as an indication that the rally of first to third could not be sustained and that the tendency towards narrow swings, heaviness, and dullness is the result of the market having been saturated with office. So I'll go over this again. July 6th is a two-point range for the average, closing near two points down on one million share days what is this shit right here that's very bad why is bad it's probably the lowest volume since before the prior rally that's why which is right here goes down to all, all it, it really has it's not it's not good at all uh, so July 6, a two-point range, closed nearly two points down on a million shares. We read this as an indication that the rally, so before I go again, remember, it closes two points down on only one million shares. So one million shares is able to push price two points down. Little volume pushes two points down. We read this as an indication that the rally of July 1st to 3rd could not be sustained and that the tendency toward narrow swings, heaviness, and dullness is the result of the market having become saturated with selling, with offers. So his conclusion is that the market is saturated with offers. Why? Because the swings are narrow there is heaviness and there's dullness. What it didn't add is that there's hesitation. By hesitation, I mean every green bar here, this green bar followed by red bar. This green bar followed by red bar. Up, down, up, down. Not up, 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 but up, down, up, down. So the narrowness 
heaviness and dullness, dullness coming from lack of volume and lack of spread. All right? As the market is attempting to rally, is the result of being saturated. All are bearish. Take a look at the footnote. The average is now on a hinge and on a springboard for an important slump. So th this is this is what needs to be understood. Like all his conclusions, starting with the climax, followed by the selling, followed by the lack of demand or the lessening of demand, followed by this dip, which sets up this attempted rally, which is not good because it's low volume, followed by this, which is dull, 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 dull. you know, narrow range, narrow whatever, so it just can't go. Red, green, immediately red, green again, tries again, fails, why it's red, why to, because the market is dull and oversaturated, setting up, the move down. So this is the second example he has given of a springboard, really what you want to do, if you're going to read this course and try to understand it, uh, one of the things that it should be done is reading it from a certain perspective or angle. One angle of it is to uh, is to learn about springboards. So it's not like, oh yeah, let me finish all these fucking pages of the Wyckoff course and go over point and figure charts and bar charts and all the sectors and industries and groups and then wave charts and then read about volume and then read about trend lines and you know that's a uh, you know, <laughs> so, but with an angle, you have an angle of learning about springboards, so you can trade them. Learning about how to keep a position sheet, so you can keep the position sheet. So that's like going at it from an angle. So the angle that I'm coming off of it is the springboard. Why? Because it's very lucrative. So what makes this the springboard? It makes, there's a climax in the background, there's lessening of demand, there's heaviness and dullness, and right here, there's no volume, there's dullness, there's hesitation in that every green bar here, followed by a red bar, and just can't go up. Setting up the bare springboard. And notice how he put it in <laughs> the footnotes. So, sometimes, just, I don't know why he does that, but pretty important point all bearish July 7th the rally at the open which would have been clear clearly by a wave chart July 7th okay a rally at the open which would have been shown by by the wave chart then a seven and a half point break of the averages on decisively increasing volume the market is now out of the former zone and downside and the volume indicates liquidation is being resumed the volume meaning the break. What happened here? This is the markdown bar. What is a markdown bar? It occurs after springboard, bear springboard that can initiate the markdown phase. Thus, the rally has run its course after lifting the average to the lower edges of the old support area. I don't know. This is just going to resistance. That's all it is. Goes to resistance, can't break through. They try again, can't do it. Volume shrinks, break crack there's a climax in the background that's it and we must assume that the next test of the market will be around levels at which support was rendered june 19th so june 19th is right here so if this is going down on this much volume on this spread do you think that this low is going to hold nope now it's funny that he, he didn't mention this high Instead, he's mentioning that this is going to go all the way to the support area right here. All the way to this low before this breakout. So he's saying that that's about to get tested. We must assume that the next test of the market will be around the levels at which support was rendered on June 19th. If large interest who bought uh, June 2nd and 3rd uh, who undoubtedly distributed their holdings during the high markets 
of the last week in June are willing to take them back near or above the previous low levels, it will be an indication that of their confidence in the future and a sign that the bear market is over. If there is no such sign, we conclude that the bear market has been resumed and recovery was an interruption of the main trend. Basically, it was just a counter trend. All right, we are on the short side and shall occupy the position until we see some reason to change again, neutralizing neutral on the bull side. The average is now on the hinge. Okay, whatever. A two point. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. Um, again, for those who are following along, you want to go and get up to this point, 7m page 24. Really watch the videos and then read it for yourself. And use a fucking ruler and do all this shit. And um, and then you gotta do it um, again because for some reason it's, it doesn't stick because it's a little bit complicated. And uh, when you understand this, you can kind of look at the market today and see similarities. And that's the point you want to get at. Anyway. So it's like, All right, I'm on uh, page uh, 24, 7, uh, 25 now of 7M. Thank you. Bye.